little bit more white to that mix. And I just want to create sort of a spotlighting effect to show like some of these are really getting light. These ones up here, I'll try to create that three-dimensional sense. Letting it kind of dance across. Some of these down here. These tiny brushes, they don't hold that much paint or water, so you do have to dip back in quite a bit. This is where you want to not just, you know, we're not just painting a smaller shape, but we're also looking at smaller shapes. So rather than kind of looking at the whole tree, you know, I am letting my, my eyes really focus in on small shapes and the details of, you know, these bows of blooms, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to kind of delineate like where are the ones that are getting the highlights and where are the ones that are just, you know, just not, and trying to differentiate that. You know, whether you're doing an experiment like me to see how big can you actually paint, or you're just doing, you know, a regular sketch. Every sketch is kind of a experiment in some way. You know, you're experimenting to see what can you see. You're experimenting to try to observe. You're experimenting to enjoy. And I just love this juxtaposition. There's, this is the juxtaposition of beauty and nature and chaos. And it's happening all around the world all the time. And our job is to take a moment out of the chaos to appreciate the beauty and hopefully put some more love and beauty back into the world. Here I'm just kind of trying to overlap some of these shapes and reinforce that. Good. Okay. I don't want to forget about my ground plane. And we talked about wanting to add some more true greens into the grassy areas here. So let's take some ultramarine and some cadmium yellow. And desaturate it slightly. Maybe add a little bit of white to lighten it. And add a little bit more of that blue. And a little bit more water to the mix. You need more opacity. There we go. A little bit more white, maybe. The ground plane, a lot of times I make it too bright, so I'm trying not to do that too much. I think it does need more blue. And you don't want to take this for granted, you know? But I'm seeing um, just some different patches of this darker bluish green intermingled with that color we put in there before, adding a little bit more blue. And I can kind of get that grass texture, but I want to keep a sense of horizontal to it as well. And I like to be kind of loose here. And that same thing we did in the sky, darkening the corner. I'm gonna do that here. Add a lot more blue to my corners and my edges. 
to kind of try to lead the eye in. Get a variety of greens here, and I want to leave some of that underpainting showing through. I'm going to lighten that color and I go for something that's a little bit smoother for the grass in the background. So white, blue, yellow. Get a little bit more creaminess here. And let's drop this in. cut against the edges of these trees to get sharper definition. We'll get in here in between these trees. Just a little bit of water, it's starting to dry on me. Okay, let's put in some texture on the trees. So I'm gonna move back to this smaller brush and I'm gonna mix up um, a mid-tone gray and then a lighter gray for the highlights. Let's get some blue, some yellow ochre, and some alizarin. And that's more on the brown side. Usually that indicates to me that there's not enough blue in it if I want to gray. So I'm going to add some more blue. And that is a pretty solid gray. I'm going to sort of dry the brush off. Kind of dry brush some of this over what we've got. Trying to maintain that shadow pattern though that we had talked about. And this is just kind of to add texture and definition. Kind of a little bit here and on this tree as well. Relatively pleased with that. I'm gonna leave the trees in the background and now let's add some white to that. And I want to tint it towards yellow. I'm going to dip into the cadmium yellow. Not that much. A little bit of white. Add some water to that. My paint's starting to get kind of sticky. And now I'm looking at the highlight patterns. falling through the trees be a little bit more white highlight there there sometimes even inside the tree it's a little highlight there dry the brush off just a little bit 
<laughs> that didn't work sometimes. I don't dry it off enough. highlight right here the more details like this you can add the better things will look it's a little bit more of a highlight right on that edge And we're looking at really small shapes now. Still trying to, you know, kind of approximate, but that's what's going to create that depth for us. Okay, we'll put a little bit of a highlight here. Some of these trees in the background. Why not? I really like that. Okay, let's add some highlights in the grass. So I'm going to take that mixture that I have, I'm going to add more yellow, cadmium yellow to it, and I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. And some of these areas here. There, I can almost kind of like direct the eye in and add more yellow to that. This is really like kind of dead grass. But I can add sort of texture and it can lead, lead my eye from here into over here. And I'm going to put something back in here to create that sense of light. A little bit more yellow into that. The paint's really starting to dry out. Let me spray everything down. Anytime you can put in like light over dark, that will help with your sense of light and texture as well. So kind of pushing this up over that shadow gives us that sense of grass growing, you know? Good. I'm gonna put that We'll do the opposite of that. Anytime you put dark over light, that also gives you sense. I'm going to kind of push the light back here. And then we're going to come over that with some of the dark texture in the grass underneath in the shadow area. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow. Maybe too much water in that. So, remember what we said before, add more paint. And I think I will switch to my tiny small round brush here. And I'm going to bring out some of these tendrils
and let me zoom in kind of pushing this color over to overlap what we just laid down like that so that you get the sense of those overlapping shapes and it creates that texture. Make it a little bit darker. And just, again, we're adding variety. Let's do some here too. And by pushing that over to overlap the lighter colors, we get that sense of texture and that sense of depth. So a little bit here. Let me switch back to the small flat. And even just like dropping some parts of that into the shadow that we had before will add variety into that shadow. So now we're really at the stage where we could call it a day and could be done but I wanna look at um, just a little bit more refinement to see like, is there anything that's bothering me or jumping out at me? And so um, as I look at this, I see kind of um, some of the underpainting that's still showing here and kind of haloing these edges and again here. So I might wanna kind of reinforce these areas and just cover that up. Um, I'm okay with it showing through in some spots, but I, uh, I feel like because these aren't the focal point, I don't want that. The other thing is I think like right here, this is a little bit too dark and I don't want to be distracted by that. So I think I'm going to paint over that too. Why don't we do that right now? So I'm going to use one of my dark colors, but I'm going to lighten it up with a little bit of some yellow ochre and let's just paint over that so that it's not quite as um, distracting. Maybe add a little bit of red into that. So you can always paint over things. Let's go ahead and while we're at it, you know, reinforce some of the darks that are in these trees. That already sits a lot better for me. I'm gonna use a small round brush and add just some tree branches poking out just for some details. And not too many, but just enough to kind of create some texture and things. That's probably even good enough right there. While I'm doing that, Let's add some more details like on our focal point. So I'm gonna darken that down. Ultramarine and alizarin, tiny bit of yellow ochre. Really come in strong with the ultramarine to give it, get it darker. Good. And We got some branches in here. Remember, we've got to reinforce the darks, we've got to keep the details where the details belong. And that's gonna help the focal point be the focal point. Got a branch that comes up here. 
really got a good mixture here going using just a little bit of that yellow ochre it's giving me much more of a true black i think i'm going to cover up some of these more saturated parts having to keep dipping in the water to keep it fluid but i like that let's do just a little bit on this tree here but not too much and thinking about like branches are going to be showing in the shadows like that i think that that's more or less sufficient Right. Let's address these areas in here. First thing I'm going to do is just try kind of softening those areas and see if I can kind of blend. And I sort of can, but I think I need to apply some paint as well. And I'm okay with kind of keeping that quite vague. Go to our gray. And let's make that a little bit more opaque. Sometimes when you lose a mix, there's just no getting it back, you know, because I mixed into it um, earlier before. It's okay. Let's keep things quite wet. And I'm gonna just drop in a mixture again of primaries. It needs to be a little bit darker than that. For kind of just a neutral gray. Let's do it here. Good. that's not as distracting to me now. And I think the last thing that I want to do is I want to revisit the sky color with some ultramarine and white. And I want to just poke in some sky holes. And the thing is, when you have sky holes coming through a tree, it will oftentimes be darker than the um, actual sky color itself. And the reason for that is because like all the little tiny branches and things are um, kind of blocking some of the light. And I think adding these, poking these sky holes in, it's going to really help create some of that three-dimensionality. We need to add more white. Maybe 
yeah, it was too much white. So always a push and pull. Back to adding a little bit more blue. Take a lot of focus, but it's worth it. I'm kind of leaning back, trying to see, you know, there's just a little bit down in here. I think I can live with that. I made a slight mistake right here. I'm gonna try and smooth this out. All right. Looking to see if there's anything else I need to be done. And I think we might be good. So if you've gotten this far, want to sign your artwork. I'm gonna do that right now with some alizarin, tiny brush. And I like to put the year 23. There we go. How big can you paint? So far, eight by 10, no problem.